So, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, we have such a uh, nice uh, place together. Uh, I will tell you in secret, uh, the uh, mouth of Columbia River is my favorite place. So, I decided to invite everyone to my favorite geographical place. I, am, I always been fascinated with uh, explorers. And here is everything about this uh, Lewis and Clark explorer. So that's why I decided to be a little bit selfish and bring you here. Uh, but today uh, we were also, uh, the Bechelon Boulevard was invited here uh, by uh, your pastor, uh, Jose, uh, to Astoria to share uh, some of the uh, interesting uh, aspects of uh, Hebrew, Hebraic roots. And so we did a, a, a Kabbalat Shabbat, the greetings of the Sabbath yesterday. And we talked uh, about the subject whether we as a Seventh-day Adventist uh, observe Jewish Sabbath or some kind of other Sabbath. And we talked about uh, the best way to see it is to follow the example of Jesus. According to Luke chapter 7 verse, uh, uh, chapter uh, 4 verse 16, it was habitual for Jesus to attend synagogue on Sabbath. So, if Jesus attended synagogue on Sabbath day, so what kind of Sabbath did Jesus observe and celebrate? Of course, he did Jewish Sabbath. So, whatever is good for Jesus shouldn't it be good for us. If we follow the example of Jesus, why should we be uh, afraid to say it? Uh, so, when I was asked today uh, about the topic of my sermon, uh, the title of my sermon is called uh, From Judaism to Adventism. Uh, partially because it is my personal spiritual journey. I uh, uh, had my spiritual journey from atheism, communism to Judaism to Adventism. So somebody may ask, okay, this is your personal experience and personal journey. Is this relevant for us? So why don't we uh, take a listen? Um, a couple of days ago, we had explosion on Viber. Uh, Pope, as the uh, as the message said, and it came virus, viral. Uh, asked. Uh, our President Trump to uh, enact the Sunday law as soon as possible. Well, well, 
It's interesting. Uh, such uh, predictions and conversations uh, happen with a, a very, very uh, regular uh, uh, pattern. По такие предсказания и такие высказы, они якобы появляются в прессе, вернее, в электронной прессе, очень регулярно. And through mainly on a social network. И на социальных сетях обычно это публикуется. And it's mainly Seventh-day Adventist network. Особенно на адвентистских социальных сетях. Well, we are living through a a very volatile time now if you watch the real news. Мы живем сейчас в очень серьезное время, если вы смотрите на настоящие новости. Неустойчивое. Неустойчивое. It looks like it's been about 10 years, no, 11 years since the last recession. Прошло 11 лет спустя, когда был последний финансовый кризис. And uh, with the trade war with China, uh, looks like it's going to lead us to another possible recession. If you uh, look at your uh, iPhone devices and watch uh, the stock, если вы смотрите на ваши телефоны, на биржевые акции, как они движутся? The Dow Jones a couple days ago dropped 800 points. А индекс Dow Jones упал на 800 баллов. So this creates a panic. Возникает сильнейшая паника. Among the investors, among people who are about to make money, the massive panic. And I saw as soon as this news started to come out, among some networks in among Adventists, uh, we receive um, also a panic. But it's a different type no, of a panic. The Sunday law is cut. Pope talked to Trump. Well, well. Uh, I'm thankful that Irina had time to dig this information out. And she was able to Trace uh, some rumors of this uh, that they actually started in 2017, am I correct? Yeah, and there was an official response of our general conference president, Elder Wilson. And I'm so glad, in spite of uh, uh, some differences uh, and uh, some issues that always happen in any church, Seventh-day Adventist Church, official position, is very balanced. And uh, we're not reacting to this kind of rumors. We have a clear guidance from the Bible and from the works of Ellen White how the things are going to be happening. And all these Information from the news and panics. All these attempts to set 
not the date for the second cup. People who do this are smart enough not to do it. But all these attempts are to figure out when the last day events occur. This is unfortunately very popular. But I want to assure you that none of these attempts that to, to, to determine when the last day events are going to happen to establish any kind of date uh, when or, or, or put a specific political event connected with the beginning of the last day event that can be uh, deduced from the news. Uh, this is not the position of the General Conference. And uh, this is not what uh, Ellen White spoke about. And this is not what the Bible speaks about. Uh, of course, I can spend uh, many lectures talking about the last day events. I love this subject. I love to study the book of Revelation. But uh, what uh, I would like to focus on today is why these kind of rumors are happening. Why periodically do we have the panic on the uh, messengers and social network and all these uh, explosions and excitement? Uh, well, we are Seventh-day Adventists, aren't we? And the operative word here is Adventist. And our focus is on the soon advent of Christ. This is the essence of what we preach. And when we uh, and, and we want to see some uh, tangible results. It's obvious. In many churches you see tangible results. You walk into a Russian Orthodox church they tell you, if you touch this casket with relics, you'll be healed. Very tangible. Uh, you can uh, come and see a, a miracle-making icon that even uh, has tears from the eyes. Very tangible. And so many testimonies about this. Uh, well, you go to some evangelical churches and it is a every Sabbath, uh, every, uh, every week, it depends, some do it even on Sabbath, some do it on Sunday, but it's a ritual of healing. And so it is uh, uh, 
Uh, usually the time at the end of the sermon, everybody who has uh, some disease or sickness, they line up uh, before the preacher. And uh, the preacher would lay the hands on the forehead of the one who needs to be healed. And this one is going to fall down on his back. And somebody's going to catch uh, the person. Oh, and the music plays. And the person comes out, I'm healed, I'm healed. Very tangible. And so people come to us. What tangible do you have? And some people are very tempted <coughs> to create this artificial, tangible experience. Jesus is, the last day events are going to happen three months from now. The biggest problem of this tangibility all these feelings are going to end. The feeling of euphoria after the healing often passes. The euphoria after the political events that supposed to start the Sunday law passes. And this is why the question will come, what do we do today? What do we do today? It is important to know that Jesus is coming soon. And some of these so-called preachers who invent these political events and try to fit them under these uh, events in the book of Revelation and so forth. They use a very interesting manipulative tactic. They say, if we stop talking about the last day events, the church is going to be sleeping. Well, well. We need to learn to live by reality, not by any kind of drugs. And unfortunately, all these type of uh, sensations are like a drug infusion into our system. We need to be awake for sure. Absolutely. But when we use caffeine to stay awake, you know what's going to happen to the rest of our body. We will stay awake. But it will reap its very harmful consequences. So, the question is, knowing and waiting for the coming of the Lord, what do we do today? How do we live today if Jesus doesn't come?
come tomorrow or after tomorrow. How do we live godly Christian life today? Let me quote to you a one person and I'll ask you to take your uh, guess who said this. With a perfect faith, I am waiting for the coming of the Messiah. But even if he lingers, I will still be waiting for him. Every day that approaches. Who might have said this in your guess? At least the person who said it, what kind of religion was he? Do you think it's a Jew? You are correct. It is actually the last out of 13 principles of faith of Judaism. The same way as Seventh-day Adventists have 28 fundamental beliefs. Uh, Rabbi Moses Maimonides uh, developed 13 articles of Jewish faith. And so you will ask me a question. What do we need this for? Well, let's go to the Bible. Uh, let's go to the book of John, chapter 8. Uh, chapter 4. Uh, and it says here, it's a story about uh, Samaritan woman. Uh, and uh, you know how she was debating with Jesus at the well. And she actually insulted Jesus. She said, aren't you, Jew, greater than our father Jacob, who dug this well? You understand, this is an insult. That's how Samaritans believed in their exclusivity. They still believe that they are so exclusive that they inbreed. Inbreed. Uh, there are today maybe two or three hundred Samaritan families left. They just in bread. And so, but they believe that Jacob is their father, not the father of the Jews. Uh, so, Jesus had some answers to this woman that convinced her otherwise. And so this woman now turns around and says, Oh, I believe, sir, you are the prophet. So now tell me, please, I have a biblical question for you. Um, here there is a mountain, it's called Gerizim. Our teachers, Samaritan teachers, taught that this is where we are supposed to worship. 
Uh, but you Jews teach that the place of worship is supposed to be Jerusalem. So, let's read part of the answer that Jesus gave to a Samaritan woman. She's, he's talking about Samaritans. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Who says this? Who says this? If Jesus says that salvation is of the Jews, maybe there is something for us, the followers of Jesus, to learn from it. Well, what is it in this uh, phrase that, how do we understand it? Are we now supposed to convert to Judaism? It is uh, very interesting that, especially in the Northwest, I discovered this interesting phenomenon. Um, if you look at Jews in America, where do you think, uh, take your guess, uh, do most of the Jews in America reside? New York. New York, Brooklyn, and also New Jersey. <laughs> Actually, if you take all together, New York and New Jersey, uh, Jewish population, it's greater than the po Jewish population of Israel. Uh, in fact, in 1992, Jewish population of the city of New York alone was greater than the Jewish population of the state of Israel. Uh, today in Manhattan, every in Manhattan and Brooklyn, every fifth person will be Jewish. Uh, now Jews uh, settle also in Florida and in other states. Uh, South California. Uh, but what about Puyallup, Washington? How many Jews reside in Puyallup, Washington. What about Spokane? What about our town, Vancouver? I can tell you that Jewish population of these northwestern town, towns is growing. Do Jews massively move here from Brooklyn? Not sure. I think I am I know I am the only Jew that actually migrated from Brooklyn <laughs> to Vancouver, Washington. <laughs> and my family is not registered in any synagogue. But the local synagogue in Brooklyn, the, in, in Vancouver, is growing. 
Because of whom? I tell you the secret. Christians. Do you know why? I talk to some of them. I give you a story. It wasn't in Vancouver. It was back when we studied in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was working my hours at the front desk of the Jewish library there. And uh, uh, on the uh, top floor, uh, there was uh, so there was my you know the the, the rabbi there, Rabbi Komarovsky. And he was holding every Monday what was known as conversion class. And so one Monday, uh, two African American women uh, came in and asked me where was the conversion class. So I pointed them out, and a couple of hours later they came back. They were very excited, and one of them talked to me and said how great teacher was Rabbi Komarovsky. And so I asked uh, this lady a question, why she became interested in conversion. Uh, and she said this, we were Catholic, but Sabbath excites us. Но нас урадует, и мы находим восторг в субботе. A year later, this woman became a first African American rabbinic student at Hebrew Union College. Вот спустя эта женщина стала первым афроамериканским раввинистическим студентом в этом колледже девочек. And now she is the first African American woman reform rabbi in the state of Georgia. I can tell you story after story after story. How many Christians today convert to Judaism? And mainly these are Christians from Sunday churches. Uh, who are dissatisfied with the mainstream Catholic type uh, Christianity. And they are looking for the law. They see value in the law. Uh, on the Russian front. Uh, there is a new organization started. It's called Bnei Noach movement, the movement of the sons of Noah. Uh, Judaism believes uh, that uh, if someone is a Jew, uh, he is supposed to follow all commandments of the Torah. Uh, but if someone is a Gentile, then only seven commandments which supposedly was given to Noah and his son. That's not biblical. But this is not biblical. It's a, it's a tradition. So for the sons of Noah, Sabbath, no. But what if the son of Noah wants to keep the Sabbath? 
что если сын Ноя хочет соблюдать субботу? Oh, he just needs to come and convert to Judaism. Он просто должен прийти и обратиться в иудаизм. And many are doing this. И многие это делают. Well, what do we do? А что делаем мы? What do we do? А что делаем мы? Well, it is true that Judaism has experience of how to live today. People and many Christians are dissatisfied by uh, empty slogans of salvation by cheap grace. Многие христиан не удовлетворяют высказывания о том, что дешевая благодать и можно спастись. Many Christians are dissatisfied with sensual feelings that contemporary churches feel their worship time. Сегодня много христиан, которые не удовлетворены чувственными ощущениями, которые дают христианские их церкви. Uh, many Christians are dissatisfied with, uh, with just a, 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 a dose of spiritual sensual topping that lacks the deep study of scripture. And so they look. They look. And they're not completely wrong. Because even Jesus points out that salvation is of the truth. Why? Well, take a look at Paul. In Romans chapter 3, uh, 1 and 2, it says, What advantage then has the Jew or what is the profit of circumcision? Much in every way. Chiefly because to them were committed the oracles of God. So both Jesus and Paul teach us that the values uh, developed in Judaism are based on a deep study of the Word of God. Somebody may say, hey, wait a second, what about these Pharisees with their formalism, with their dead religion? Well, take a look at the words of Jesus. Matthew 24, uh, 23, uh, verse 1 and 2, and 3. Jesus spoke to me multitudes and to his disciples. He <coughs> said, the scribes and the Pharisees seek in Moses' seat. Okay, what is Moses' seat? Some of you who went with me to Israel, I always show you my favorite place in Israel. It's a Galilean village of Chorazin. Uh, and there, there is a old first century synagogue. And there, there is a stone-made chair that is uh, on the right side of the place where the scrolls of the Torah were kept. 
И справа от того места, где хранились свитки Торы, стоит такой сделанный из камня, как бы большой стул. And I would sit on this seat. Обычно я сажусь на этот стул, каменный. And of course, uh, uh, some people say, "Oh, you are the Pharisee." И они говорят, "Вот ты точно фарисей." Well, so the, the, that particular seat was designed for a teacher. Это это стул или это такое сиденье было специально сделано для учителя. Who would give the interpretation of the law? So they would take the scroll of the Torah from uh, the uh, from the uh, special place, special cover known as uh, Aron Kadesh. Uh, the uh, portion of the Torah uh, uh, was read. For example, uh, this week uh, the portion of the Torah is from Deuteronomy chapter uh, 3 to chapter uh, 7. And uh, then uh, uh, the teacher, the Pharisee, would provide the interpretation. So this is what Jesus and Paul refer talking about the Jews. For centuries, for centuries, since the return from Babylonian captivity, starting from Ezra, whose book we have in the Bible. Uh, Judaism developed a curriculum of, of deep study of the scripture. Judaism разработал программу по глубокому исследованию изучения священного писания. And so this is what Pharisees and scribes did. И вот что делали фарисеи и книжники. So what's opinion of Jesus on the curriculum? Therefore, verse 3, whatever they tell you to observe, observe and do. You see, Jesus has no problem and encourages us to follow the ancient curriculum that is uh, actually rooted in the deep study of scripture. Uh, and so this is what many Christians want. Well, what am I just doing? I speak highly about Judaism. But what kind of texts am I using? I used for you three texts from the New Testament. I hope you were carefully watching that I used number one, the book of John, number two, the Gospel of Matthew, number three, the, 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 the epistle to Rome. It is interesting that uh, uh, when I pastored one church 15 years ago and so, some people complained that I was preaching too much from the Old Testament. Много людей, когда я работал в пасторе 15 лет назад, люди говорили, что слишком много проповедуют из Ветхого Завета. And they said, we're Christians, we want to hear the New Testament. Мы христиане, нам нужно Нового Завета, чтобы их изучать. So, today I am given lots of New Testament. И сегодня я вам Нового Завета много говорю. But these passages are pointing to Jesus' and Paul's opinion about the necessity to study the scripture. Uh, 
говорили о необходимости изучения Писания. And living by the scripture. И более того, жить в Писании. Living by scripture that starts not with the gospel, but starts with the book of Genesis. И жить по Писанию не только не только тому, который начинается с книги Матфея, а то, который начинается с книги Бытия. All scriptures. Всего Писания. So there is something in Judaism that is actually valuable. If we summarize Judaism and its virtue today, I would use the English phrase here now. Вот то, что говорит сейчас Здесь и сейчас. Да. Here now. How do we live today? Как нам жить сегодня? How do we live ethical life based on scripture? Как мы будем жить сегодня этично, нравственно, основываясь на библейских позициях? Deep study of the Torah can help us to understand our everyday challenges. Глубокие исследования Тора помогут нам найти ответы на наши ежедневные трудности и испытания, которые мы испытываем в нашей жизни, духовные и физические. А авторы Нового Завета постоянно нам показывают на ответы Завета Писания. Well, this is what Judaism has. Вот что имеет на сегодняшний день Юдаизм. But let me share with you what Judaism doesn't have. Uh, Twenty years ago, I was in Israel, uh, and I preached in our Adventist church in Haifa. And there was my friend with, we are from the same town, Kremenchu uh, Arkady Rabinovich. He was an elder there. And so he told me that there is an organization uh, in Israel that is acting against Christians. It's called Yad Lahim, Hand to the Brethren. И он рассказал о том, что в Израиле очень активно идет работу антимиссионерская организация, которая целью имеет вытащить иудеев, якобы попавших или принявших христианство. Называется рука братья. Идея была, чтобы те, кто приняли Иисуса как своего мессию, их обратно принесли. And this is how they act. They call on the phone, they say, we have spiritual questions. Can you answer the questions? Let us meet. I am interested, I'm searching. So Arkady told me, I know this is mission and the missionary organization, I'm just warning you. But I still want two of us to meet with them. I want to see how they act. So we met in Tel Aviv in uh, the apartment where another Adventist church was meeting. And there was quite an interesting uh, meeting. The ladies tried to offer this Orthodox Jew a peaches. He would turn them up and said, no, 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 I cannot do that. They said, I don't know. Maybe these peaches were grown in a sabbatical year by the Arab because I don't trust you. Они говорят, мы не можем их кушать, потому что, возможно, персики эти выращены были в седьмой субботний или год, или субботний год, когда арабами и, возможно, у них это купили, мы не можем вам доверять. 
марафон дискуссион. It was brutal, I tell you. Она была очень жестокой и жесткой. For not not like not like physically brutal, but we're going verse by verse in Hebrew, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Это реально был текст за текстом на иврите, с иврита переводы серьезно глубоко копать. I was really seriously challenged. I had to seriously stand my ground. Это был серьезный вопрос, задавали эти люди. Это мне нужно было действительно стоять на том, что это во что я верю. And the way Arkady was less academically experienced, so he just was looking. Поскольку Аркадий не был академического подготовки, он просто наблюдал за тем, что происходило. Finally, he saw me being completely physically exhausted because there were two of them against me alone. А было двое мужчин против меня одного. Видно, что я уже физически тащу. So he decided to break it up. Он решил эту дискуссию остановить. It was two after midnight. Это было уже после двух часов ночи. And so he said, "All right." Он сказал, "Ну хорошо." Suppose you convince us. Давай скажем, ты вы уже нас убеди. Suppose I stop believing in Jesus. И скажем, я остановил, перестал верить в Иисуса. So then what? И так что же тогда? And that put this particular two Orthodox Jews into a into a dead stop. И это было для этих двух ортодоксальных евреев как ну буквально тупик. You will be a Jew, the answer. Он говорит, тогда ты же будешь евреем. And he says, Am I not a Jew now? Он говорит, а что я уже не еврей сейчас? They couldn't answer. Они не могли бы ответить ему. There is no answer. Не было бы никакого ответа. There is no answer in Judaism about then what. А в иудаизме нет ответа на что происходит дальше. In Judaism, there is only this is what you're supposed to do now. But the question, what's then? То есть, на новоиске есть ответ на то, что ты должен делать сейчас, а что потом, что дальше следующий шаг, то есть будущее, то есть неизвестно. We have a congregation in Minneapolis. А в Миннеаполисе у нас есть община. It's called Shalom Minnesota. Которая называется Shalom Minnesota. My friend and colleague Valery Ruchko. Мой друг и коллега Валери Ручко is the pastor both uh, he is pastor in the source of life uh, uh, russian church and shalom minnesota and so very often he is invited to uh, the elderly care facility where he meets many elderly jewish men and women Частенько его приглашают помогать и присутствовать на или посещать дома по уходу за пожилыми людьми, которые чаще всего там проживающие, они еврейского происхождения. We have a church, some of you know, in Glendale, California. У нас есть церковь в Глендейле, Калифорния. Where my friend Anatoly Gurduyalov is the pastor. Где наш друг Анатолий Гурдуяло является служителем. And he says in Hollywood, by Los Angeles, he says there are many uh, Russian uh, uh, elderly Jews who ask me to come and do uh, and study Bible with them. И много пожилых евреев, которые проживают в Дэнвере, Калифорнии, они приглашают меня, чтобы я с ними изучал Библию. And and then we have a, a group in Boston. Также у нас есть группа в Бостоне. And uh, my friend, uh, Pastor. Alexander Arfanidi is a chaplain in one of the elderly care facilities in Boston. Мой друг Александр Арфанидий является одним из капелланов такого подобного дома по уходу за пожилыми в Бостоне. And he says also has very productive conversations with many older Jewish people, men and women. И очень много пожилых людей, которые детского происхождения, они задают очень много хороших вопросов, они имеют продуктивные дискуссии. 
Many of them are being baptized, accepting Jesus as their Messiah. И многие из них принимают Иисуса, даже принимают учение как слово и принимают Иисуса как слово. Becoming a part of the Adventist movement. Становясь частью адвентистского движения. And these uh, co-workers, they keep calling me, and they ask me a question. Why the older people are being interested? Well, because the older you get, the more you are looking into the Hereafter. Judaism doesn't have the question about the hereafter. And by the way, Christianity doesn't have a serious, consistent answer about the hereafter. И, к сожалению, христианство, даже большинство христианской церкви сегодня не имеет упорядоченного, последовательного ответа, что же происходит после смерти. Paul says, Павел говорит, Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. It is very interesting. Очень интересно. Our citizenship is in heaven. Наше жительство, а потом гражданство на небесах. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Откуда мы ожидаем с нетерпением спасителя нашего Господа Иисуса Христа? Who will transform our lonely body? Uh, that it may be conformed to His glorious body. If there is something which would be the essence of Adventism. Would you not agree that this text, Philippians 3.20, reflects it perfectly? Because it shows two major unique traits of Adventism that are not typical to any Christian uh, theology. Eschatology and anthropology. Eschatology Eschatology is the teaching about the future and last day events. Anthropology is about the nature of man. Eschatology shows that we are to look forward for the glorious second coming of Jesus. Where we, where there will be a great uh, total resurrection of all who died believing in Jesus. It is pretty clear what Jesus says uh, to Martha in John chapter uh, 11. Uh, it says here uh, in verse 25, I am the resurrection 
and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. Я есть в воскресенье и жизнь. Верующий в меня, если и умрет, оживет. Judaism doesn't have it. Он и этого вы не найдете в иудаизме. Come to any most educated rabbi and ask him a question. What is going to happen to me after I die? Подойдите к любому весьма высокообразованному иудею и спросите, что произойдет со мной после того, когда я умру. An educated rabbi is going to teach you all kinds of very helpful things about the Torah, ethics, and law. Этот высокообразованный человек научит вас прекрасной Торе, этике и законам. But he is not going to give you any answer regarding what is going to happen to me when I die. Jesus gives such an answer. Look with me at the book of John, chapter 5. And starting from verse uh, uh, 28. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the grave will hear the voice of the Son of God. And come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Pretty clear. Two resurrections. Actually, not only Jesus teaches that. Daniel teaches that. Daniel 12, 1 and 2 has exactly the same words. Resurrection of life. Resurrection of condemnation. But who among the Christians teach that? Go around the churches, ask questions. You will have to see all kinds of secret raptures and other uh, mess. But unfortunately, Adventism is the only Christian teaching that is that has a biblical approach to eschatology. And it gives a very specific, concrete hope. Resurrection of life, resurrection of wicked. The Torah ends with the words. Deuteronomy 30 says, choose life. So that's what we are all up. And when we talk about the anthropology, it is also pretty clear. Look at this. Verse 28. All who are where? Doesn't say the souls which are enjoying paradise. It talks about those who are in grave will come forth. What is it? It's a very specific resurrection of body. Restoration of the wholesomeness that God gave us at creation. Both body, soul, and spirit. Three. Body, soul, and spirit. This is Adventism. No other Christian denomination. This is 
is why. It is sometimes unfortunate that people begin to think of these things closer to the end of life. But you know what? The reality is this. There is no any other answer. No one will answer specifically, systematically, and consistently according with accordance to the word of Jesus. What is hereafter? So, maybe both groups choose and Adventists need each other? Maybe we can learn from each other? As Paul says, All tests, but hold to good. Test all, but hold to the good things. Well, maybe these are two parts. Maybe we need them to learn about here now. I tell you, I feel bad about these people who constantly sound alarm. Pope and Patriarch met together next year will be the coming of Jesus. 2015. Church is apostatizing. Ted Wilson met with Pope. Now Pope is talking to Trump. How many times are we going to stumble at the same type of obstacle? Do you know what these people who are thinking that the church is sleeping, that's why they're inventing this kind of uh, infusion uh, into, uh, the, ch into uh, the media. You know what they're lacking? Вы знаете, те, кто пытается вот эти вот делать э, такие попытки вливания, э, скажем, такого вот э, наркотика в систему наших сетей, э, думают о том, что церковь спит. Чего же не достает? They do not understand the value of the deep study of scripture. Они не понимают ценность глубокого исследования писания. Instead of studying the scriptures, they study rumors and gossips. Instead of opening the Bible every night, every day, or whatever, and studying the scripture, they're opening the news. I strongly believe that the Bible has enough power to keep us awake and has enough balance by which we in perfect faith will be waiting for the second coming of Jesus without going into 
into some foolish exchange. Для того, чтобы не вступая в глупые какие-то крайности. Just study the Bible. Изучайте Писание. Study the Bible and learn from Moses, Samuel, David, Isaiah, Jesus, and Paul. И изучайте, учитесь у Моисея, Исаии, Павла и Иисуса. But on the other hand, с другой стороны, there is a great news for those who want to live forever, who don't want to just go into the grave and just live some inheritance and that's it. The great hope that rings in our hearts, as the song says. Hope of the coming of the Lord. The hereafter. Let's combine this together. And be blessed. In Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to be balanced in the study of your word. Help us to be patiently waiting for your glorious coming. Teach us to live daily life based on your law, based on the teaching of Jesus. Help us to grow while we are waiting for your glorious God. Amen. Amen.